Rated M for murder! Top 10s! Hey guys, welcome to another Top 10. And boy has it been forever since I've done a Top 10. In a very long time. Super, like almost a year, almost a year since the last Top 10. This Top 10 is gonna be a little different. It's kind of, it's, is it a Top? It's like a top, top five and a half, five or top five e five. It's a game of League of Legends. Top, mid lane, bot lane, jungle. Uh, you know, it's like it's. You got your lanes. That's what we're doing here. Sequels. What makes a good one? How long does it take to really get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop that is a sequel? Is there a formula to it? Perhaps a school of how to make a great one? But Batman, be careful where you're going with this, you negative Nancy! Is this the top 10 worst sequels in gaming? Actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different. This time, I'm going to split my top 10 in half. This is my top 5 progressive and top 5 regressive game sequels. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does progressive and regressive mean? Progressive games, for the sake of this review, means that it's a game that's a sequel that's really improved based on what the originals created. Whether it's story, gameplay, presentation, the sequel improves greatly on what we love about the first one. Regressive, on the other hand, means sequels that despite some of the improvements being beneficial, the overall tone, presentation, gameplay, etc. ended up moving the franchise backwards from what they were already used to. Now this doesn't mean that these games suck, it just means that the improvements ended up hurting the game's overall leap forward. And yes, this is a top 10 list, so as a reminder, there are games from franchises that Gerard has not played, so give the guy a break. Yeah, breaks! Give him a Kit Kat! I'd love one! Number 5 Progressive the original Kingdom Hearts brought a lot of innovation with it. Disney characters, Final Fantasy characters, original cool, weird emo characters. The real-time action beat the crap out of them style mixed in with wonderful spells and abilities from various Disney franchises and characters. Type it, it's a genre. It's, it's a genre now. With the use of the Keyblade, you feel unstoppable. Now what did Kingdom Hearts 2 do differently? The biggest one for this game is the ability to use two Keyblades and a plethora of matching suits. The simple progression of combat from one game to another with enough innovation is actually all we need to really enjoy a game. I'm going to leave this one a little bit on the lighter side because I've already reviewed both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, so if you want more of an opinion on those, go ahead and give those a click. I'll make it easy on you guys. Click Goofy's face! Regressive. Without a doubt, Zelda 1 paved the way for the top-down action-adventure genre. Simple and explorative gameplay that allows you to control Link and you feel responsible for your actions. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about its sequel, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Now, this game, in my opinion, is actually quite fun. It provides interesting gameplay, you can cast some spells, and fight some interesting monsters. However, the controls aren't nearly as tight as the original. Sometimes there's too much happening on the screen and you can easily get overwhelmed. You no longer feel like you are responsible for what happens. You are at the mercy of the game's baddies. Completely different game design. And the overall quality kind of dropped a little bit in my opinion. But you gotta give it up for them for trying something different. No, I want everything the same always. Number four, progressive. People complain that there were no good games on the Wii. Blah, blah, blah. The Wii hates the hardcore game or Nintendo abandoned us. Create your theories, good people of the internet, but when it's all said and done, Mario Galaxy was a phenomenal game. Dare I say it's my favorite Mario 3D platformer. <gasps> Over the legendary Mario 64! Well, Galaxy was my favorite, until Mario Galaxy 2 came along. The improvements, although subtle, streamlined the feel of the Mario Galaxy universe. The UI was faster and much more accessible. You can switch to Luigi at any time once you unlock him. And using Yoshi in designated levels just makes the game that much more of an improvement. Not to mention, Mario Galaxy 2's difficulty is way higher than Mario Galaxy. And my favorite thing, they minimize the use of the crappy motion controls on some of these games. Cause let's be honest, trying to balance Mario for a long time gets really annoying. 
4 Regressive. The Force Unleashed was a pretty solid game. I really enjoyed it despite how many graphical glitches and weird gameplay issues I came across. I, like most people, had really high hopes for the success of its sequel, The Force Unleashed 2. It was a sequel that a lot of people were just not ready for at the time. Two lightsabers? More force powers? Limbs falling off? Badass! What the hell is wrong with any of those things? A few simple things ruin the experience. It's an incredibly short game for starters. The story seems incredibly uninspired and stale when comparing it to the original, let alone the rest of the canon Star Wars universe. And the physics of the two lightsabers with a combination of the force powers you had from the first game just kind of make this game really easy. A huge opportunity was missed here. Number 3, Progressive. I think it's safe to say, when we all had our N64s, we were all very stoked about multiplayer games. But when we received Smash Brothers, we were all so freaking happy! A brawler with our favorite Nintendo characters battling it out? Hell yeah! By the way, a quick apology to my brother Jacques. I bought this game for him for his 18th birthday. He didn't want it. I just really wanted it for myself. Sorry... Well, now the whole internet knows, so you should be safe. You're not safe. Lo and behold, a few years later, the GameCube comes out, and with it later on down the road, Super Smash Bros. Melee. More characters, a more cohesive feel of a journey with a little bit of a story somewhat. More items, more missions, more bonus content, more everything! The expansion of this game was just wonderful! Correct me if I'm wrong, Gerard, but isn't Brawl better? Final smashes, better graphics, more characters, a full-fledged story mode that works quite nicely? While a lot of the changes in Brawl were really nice, a lot of them had a negative effect for most veteran players. This forces us, the player, to really favor Melee more. That doesn't seem to make much sense. Two words. Random tripping. You win! Three. A lot of people complained about Final Fantasy XIII. Everyone hated the story, the gameplay, how linear it felt. There aren't very many characters people genuinely enjoyed. Well, for what it's worth, I'm really one of the few minority that actually enjoyed Final Fantasy XIII for what it was. Defend it! Not today. See, Square Enix was listening somewhat and tried to go back to the drawing board for a sequel, Final Fantasy XIII 2. And boy, did they backpedal quite a bit. Yes, the cast of 13 was kind of lame, but that doesn't mean you should pick the most unimportant character in the Final Fantasy 13 universe and make them the protagonist. You can't play as anyone from a previous game, and they added a new heterosexual partner who doesn't really bring much to the table. Time travel was their solution to chop up the linear feel, which in my opinion didn't really work very well. And last but not least, these two are the only party members we really have. They replaced the third party member slot with an enemy, and it just didn't really work that well. Say what you will about anything from Final Fantasy XIII, but at least in my opinion it had a lot more heart and meaning than XIII 2 did. Too progressive! The original Diablo was pretty interesting. The graphics were not the greatest, but the premise was simple. Choose a class that seems to fit your playstyle, battle your way through many a labyrinth, get equipment, simple multiplayer, and... Save Tristram from Diablo! Many years later, Diablo 2 came along and boom, blows the original right out of the water! The story is now split into both main and side quests, waypoints let you jump around from level to level while you explore, charms, socketed items, the... Paradric Cube! The runes, gems, the list goes on! The original Diablo feels horrible in comparison to this fantastic sequel that many gamers till this day still play. Hell, when the latter reset eight years ago, I would go SOJ Uber Diablo hunting on servers with an MIRC community. Man, was I a nerd. Still am one. But with that said... Too regressive! One of the biggest disappointments for sequels in terms of progression was Diablo 3. Graphically very impressive, Diablo 3 still stuck to a lot of what made Diablo 2 great, but it just didn't have that great complexity that Diablo 2 had. I admit, I did kind of enjoy the way the skill system was set up, but still, how can I describe it? It's... it's too streamlined. Diablo's too attention to detail with mixing and collecting items was fantastic. Diablo 3 had massive appeal for the first month or so, and then it just kind of disappeared. 
especially the people who never played Diablo 2. Many a gamers went back to playing Diablo 2, which I still do every now and then. Having a level cap was kind of dumb, the auction house, while kind of cool in theory, was poorly executed, even if people were making real dollars off of it, and still no real PvP till this day. PvP was a great and fun component. And they make all these great classes, yet limit the amount of players to join one game at a time. All right, we get it. Diablo 3 was a disappointment. It sure was. Leah, let's go back to Diablo 2, where you don't exist. One regressive. Yes, we get it. Resident Evil 4 was amazing. Yes, I know, I agree that Resident Evil 5 wasn't nearly as good as Resident Evil 4. But at least with Resident Evil 6, it was, um. It was pretty, uh. It was innovative. A, a lot. For, um. The genre of. Just say it sucked. Okay, it was pretty bad in terms of source material. Resident Evil 4 had fantastic atmosphere. Resident Evil 5's was alright, but not amazing. Resident Evil 6 had so many atmospheres that you couldn't tell if they were scary or just flat out annoying to even look at. You couldn't really see that well in terms of lighting, no matter how much you adjust the brightness on your screen, and the storylines were a massive stretch of a mess. Four different campaigns that while on the surface seem fun, are kind of paper thin in terms of repetitive gameplay and progress. Shower all of this with the weird upgrading system and add a little dash of quick time events. Overall, they try to cram a lot into this game with unpolished gameplay with a mix of weird frame rates. Too much goes on and it kind of backfires in a way. I appreciate the sentiment that they tried really hard, but they did go overboard. In this case, too much is a bad thing. Kinda like all those movies. Hey, you know, I like those movies. <laughs> uh, no, no, no I did not. I, <laughs> woo. Number one, progressive! Maybe this one is a stretch, but I consider it to be a sequel. If you've ever seen the very first episode of The Completionist, you'll know that I love Mega Man X for multiple reasons. But the biggest and best reason as to why I love Mega Man X is the reason as why it's number one on this list. Progress. I'm talking full-blown character progression based on not only just beating Robot Masters, but by collecting items that are not meant to be found so easily, and by getting capsules from Dr. Light. The story arc alone of X being nothing when he starts and Zero being amazing, and by the end of the game they've role reversed, is fantastic. X takes responsibility. He literally transforms into a more powerful robot, and for that, we learn to appreciate the subtle things like speed dashing and wall climbing. It took the simple concept of what Mega Man was and added a few explorative goals that in turn create a more powerful and endearing protagonist. So there you guys have it, my top five versus five bottom and top lane champs of League of Legends. That's what you just saw, right? Pretty sure you did. In any case, if you have any suggestions for future top tens, leave those in the comments below. Leave your suggestions for the future of the show as well. And as always, guys, please, if you like this video, like it, share it with your friends, tell everyone of the weird word of the beard and all that great stuff. Now, if you excuse me, this is where I put an ending bit that I think is funny. But I have absolutely nothing. Maybe I'll just talk about my problems. You want to hear about my problems? <laughs> Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da